Channing Tatum, Oscar nominee or winner. You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of Foxcatcher. We as a nation fail to honor you. I want to see this country soar again. What's he get out of all this? Me winning. America winning. This is more than just some piece of metal. It's about what the metal represents. The virtues it requires to attain it. The Oscars and the Olympics are not dissimilar. You train hard for the gold, but then sometimes you have to admit to yourself you're simply not ready to compete and have to wait it out until the next opportunity comes around. Thankfully, the Oscars don't take place every four years, and Foxcatcher has had to sit on the shelf just one year after bowing out of last year's race. And with all this extra time to train, Sony Pictures Classics has no excuse for not running a stellar Oscar campaign. Realizing the film was already on the industry's radar, as well as the radar of some savvy moviegoers, Foxcatcher debuted early on in May at Cannes, partially utilizing the Summer Awards debut strategy popularized by Woody Allen. And luckily, it didn't go home empty-handed. It was nominated for the festival's highest honor, the Palme d'Or, and won Best Director for Bennett Miller. Miller is himself an Oscar athlete, already nominated for Best Director for Capote, Philip Seymour Hoffman won for the film, and while he wasn't personally nominated for Moneyball, the film still picked up six nominations. Then interestingly, Foxcatcher has a financial backer as mysterious and determined as the character Steve Carell portrays, John DuPont. Megan Ellison, armed with her father's billions from the tech company he founded, Oracle, descended upon Hollywood as some kind of genie, telling top talent she would fund their dream projects. This has resulted in True Grit, The Master, Zero Dark Thirty, Her, and American Hustle. In fact, with those last two, Ellison became the first woman and fourth producer ever to have two films competing in the Best Picture category at once. Ellison has yet to win, but she's certainly becoming a junior Harvey Weinstein. Intimately knowledgeable of how the award circuit works, impressive connections, and artistic credibility. Like DuPont, the intensely private Ellison basically bought her way into an industry she wanted to be a part of, but obviously with much better results. The story of John DuPont and the Schultz brothers is infamous and made headlines when it happened back in 1996, but few remember it today. Foxcatcher is hoping to change that. In front of the camera, there's Oscar nominee Mark Ruffalo, as well as Steve Carell, who has some credibility of his own, thanks to co-starring an Oscar winner Little Miss Sunshine and doing one of these comedian gets immensely serious turns that for a time worked very well for Robin Williams and Jim Carrey. But every athletic team needs a star player, and an Oscar team is no different. And Foxcatcher has quite the star in Channing Tatum, taking on his first serious role since becoming one of Hollywood's biggest stars. And this is another of Oscar's favorite turns, bright, attractive actors going dark and ugly. It worked for Halle Berry, Nicole Kidman, Charlize Theron, and Kate Winslet. So maybe Tatum's fake nose and no-holds-barred performance could also do the trick. The Oscars love to go young in the Best Actress and Supporting Actress category, so why not skew young over in the male categories for a change of pace? Tatum is also valuable as his presence could not just win the gold for Foxcatcher, but bring in the box office cash. So has Foxcatcher finally stepped into the Oscar ring to dominate, or should it have stayed on the bench? Foxcatcher is a master class in acting, but in pacing, not so much. I mean, Bennett Miller definitely knows what it takes to make a film Oscar worthy, but it requires a delicate touch, and here I'd say he's a bit heavy-handed. There are several scenes and montages that go on for just way too long, and I think that the entire film would have benefited from an editor who could stand up to Miller and say, look, I know you want an Oscar, but some of the sequences in this film are verging on downright boring. And the result is a film that is dripping with desperation for an Oscar, just as John DuPont was dripping with desperation for an Olympic gold medal. And maybe that's brilliant. Maybe on that level, uh, the Academy will eat it up. But I think purely from an entertainment perspective, again, in some places, the film is boring. Now, speaking of John DuPont and his desperation, uh, by far and away, the most impressive job here is done by Steve Carell. Now, he's had a lot of Oscar buzz coming out of the festival circuit where people have been seeing Foxcatcher, but for the rest of us, it's been hard to really 
uh, believe all the buzz because the trailers don't do Carell's performance justice. The trailers have focused mostly on Tatum, understandably, because he's the big box office star here, uh, just the biggest star in general associated with the film. And because of that, because he has a lot to protect at this point, it makes me even more impressed with the risks that he takes here. He is very, very good here. Very interesting, vulnerable performance. His physical acting is by far and away better than the way he delivers his dialogue. There's nothing wrong with it, but when he opens his mouth, he's Channing Tatum. But physically, it made me wonder if his background as a dancer came into play here, because the way he embodies his character is transformative. Mark Ruffalo also highly transformed at every level. And in regards to the transformation aspects of this movie, I think that kudos belong in two places there. One, to the transformation team, makeup. Uh, such a good job turning these actors into these characters. But then also I think the actors deserve a lot of credit because they're under so much makeup and they're under these obvious wigs that they're still able, through the strength of their performances, to make the audience see past that and actually see these characters. Uh, sometimes you still were jolted out of it though, particularly in the beginning of the film, when you watch uh, Tatum and Carell having a scene together and you're like, you both have really fake noses on. And I'm surprised by the way how big Tatum's role is in this film. It's very much his movie. Ruffalo is supporting. Tatum uh, I think is a lead as well as Carell, but I wonder how that'll affect Tatum's Oscar chances as I think he'd be a little bit trickier to get nominations in the lead category. Maybe they'll promote him in supporting anyway. And I think he does deserve a nomination. I just don't think he's quite at the win level yet, but he should be on the board. As for the film itself, I think it will be on the board uh, because of the acting, and that's largely the categories where, ha where it will have its best uh, chance. But I think the film overall is more than just the acting. I think it says something very interesting and powerful and disturbing about wealth. Uh, and that makes it, I think, worth checking out. That message and I think the performances. So even though I think because of the pacing this won't be one of the great films of all time, I think it will be a strong awards contender and I think it is worth seeing. Also, just to warn you, it's very disturbing and Tatum's character doesn't want to talk about what happens to him in the, mo in the movie, uh, you know, within the world of the film, and I think it'll be hard to discuss this movie with others. But it will rattle around in you, it will stick with you. Uh, it, again, very disturbing. I couldn't quite put my finger on it, but that's what I walked away with. Not only was I impressed with the performances, but it was, it was just something amazing to behold. So that's my review of Foxcatcher. If you've seen the film, I hope you leave your own thoughts down below. Thank you so much for tuning into my review, and you can check out some more episodes right now.